Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I'm IATF qualified author doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I'm again back with a very, very interesting topic. What exactly is OEE, Overall Equipment Effectiveness? Well, if you see in our day to day life, whenever say we are going to buy a room air conditioner, so we try to find out that what is the cost, what kind of efficiency it is going to give with respect to the power, how much cooling it will give, for how long we can continue to run, what exactly is the warranty life, what benefit we will get after the warranty life and there are so many things. Now what exactly what we are trying to do here is that we are trying to identify that when we are going to buy that particular equipment, what will be the output that we are going to get in comparison to what we are anticipating. In a way, knowingly and unknowingly we are doing something related to OEE. Well, this particular word OEE was first initiated in 1980s by Seichi Nakizama of Japan with respect to TPM when he coined this particular word and after that it has become a very important and a popular word especially in the manufacturing sector. In fact, OEE is considered to be a gold standard with respect to the manufacturing industry to see that whether our facility is working as per the requirement or not. So in this particular video in detail I am going to talk about what exactly is OEE, how to calculate OEE, then we will take one example with respect to that. Then I will be discussing five very interesting and common industry related questions about OE and then in the last I am going to talk about what are the key challenges that industry is facing with respect to OE. So let's first start with respect to OE. So when we talk about OE overall equipment effectiveness primarily we are talking about three key factors that is availability, performance and quality. Now one very interesting question that, that comes is that should there be any target or if there is any industry benchmark with respect to OE? So the answer is yes and no both. Because you know if you see in industry you will find different kind of targets which are there. But then you need to see from your perspective, from your organization perspective that what exactly is our performance as of now. And then you need to see that how there can be an incremental improvement with respect to that rather than challenging or competing with other industries. Now talking specifically now about the, these three keywords availability, performance and quality. So when we talk about availability primarily our intent is to understand that what exactly is the ratio of run time to the planned production time. So when we talk run time our intent is the actual time where production happened after we subtract it with the time of line stoppage maybe due to machine failure, tool failure, plan changeover, maybe the operator non-availability and etc. And the second part that is planned production time. It is a total production time minus the planned time. Maybe it could be the lunch time or tea breaks and whatever it is. So finally the formula becomes for availability is the run time divided by the planned production time. Now secondly when we talk about performance. So when we talk about performance our intent is that we need to understand that what are the causes in the manufacturing process because of which we are not running our machine or the equipment to the maximum possible speed when it was supposed to be. So primarily it is a ratio of net run time to the run time. And then third quality. So when we talk about quality our intent is to understand that whatever parts that we have manufactured how many parts are not meeting to the quality standard maybe it could be uh, they may need some rework or segregation or repair. At times uh, when we are talking about quality we are talking about first time yield or first time right also. So as a formula when we are calculating it primarily it is quality is good quality product and in comparison to the overall product that we have produced. Now if you take one example with respect to OEE that how to calculate. So let us take a very simple example and in that simple example we are assuming that uh, there is a shift of 8 hours means 480 minutes and there is a break of say overall of 60 minutes and there is a downtime 47 minutes. Let us assume that and the ideal cycle time for producing one piece is one second and the total pieces that are produced is 19,271 
and the total rejected are 423. So this is the base data that we are assuming and on this basis we will try to understand that how we can calculate availability, performance and quality. So when we are calculating availability, uh, well as we said that the shift is 480 minutes, the break is 60 minutes. So the planned production time is 480 minus 60, it will come out to be 420 minutes. We already know the downtime is 47 seconds. So the runtime is planned production time minus the downtime. So it comes out to be 373 minutes. Now we all know the formula for availability is runtime divided by planned production time. So it comes out to be 88.81%. Now going next. Now we talk about performance. So the Ideal cycle time we already decided is 1 second. The total pieces that were produced is 19,271. The run time is 373 minutes. We already calculated earlier. So the performance, the calculation will be the ideal cycle time into the total produced and divided by the run time. So once we calculate, it would come out to be 86.11%. Now coming to the third indicator, that is quality. So the produce quantity is 19,271, reject is 423. So the good quantity produced is 18,848. And if you look into the basic formula for quality, it is good produce divided by the total produced. So the formula, if you put the data into it, it will come out to be 97.8%. And now we have a data with respect to availability, performance and quality. So when we will put all three together, the, as per the OE formula, it will come out to be 74.79%. So it's very easy to calculate, but the most important question is that we need to analyze and understand that what are the different reasons that why we are not achieving an OE of 100%, which may be an idealistic stage, but then what are things which are stopping us? So there are primarily six big losses which are resulting in uh, the delay or maybe the loss in OE. So what are these six losses? So let's bifurcate them into three key parts with respect to availability, performance and quality. So with respect to availability, there are two key losses. The first one is with respect to the unplanned stoppage and the planned stoppage. And something related to that is with respect to the equipment failure and it could be with respect to the setup and adjustment. Then when we talk about performance loss, we are talking about two key things here small stops and the slow cycle means whatever timeline that we specified we are actually not running the machine as per that and it can result in idling and the minor stop or it could be because of the reduced speed and the third big loss which is related to the quality loss is about production reject and the startup rejects so it could be because and could be resulting in because of the process defect and the reduced yield and overall it is going to impact the OEE one very important thing to understand here is that uh, when we talk about OE, it has a direct relation with cost of quality also. The higher the OE, the lower is the cost of poor quality. And lower the OE, the higher is the cost of poor quality. Now, now coming to the next. What are the five key questions, very relevant and important questions which are always being discussed in industry. So the first and the very basic question that comes is that when we are calculating OEE, is it an efficiency indicator or an effectiveness indicator? Well, from the definition, it's very clear. We are talking about overall equipment effectiveness. And the definition of effectiveness is what has been planned and what has been achieved. So it means it is an effectiveness indicator and not the efficiency indicator, generally what is assumed in industry. Then second very interesting and very common question that comes is that whatever target that we are setting for OEE, is it if it should be same for all the assembly lines say for example we have 10 di different assembly lines or maybe different machine shop or we should have a different target now let's understand this question more clearly and then we'll have the answer also well now assume that we have got two assembly lines now one line is producing only one product all eight hours while the other line is assembling five different products now, will it be prudent to have the same OEE target as we know that the change over time in line 2 will be much higher than line 1 which will result in no availability time and resulting in low E. So it is pertinent to have different OEE target for dissimilar processes in the same organization if it is possible. Then third, 
very interesting question that when we talk about we can we have a benchmark with respect to the other industries we talked little bit earlier also about it so well since we do not have a uh, similar kind of processes in the same organization so should we have the same oe target the answer is no now coming to the fourth question when we talk about oe is it a indicator related to equipment performance or the manufacturing productivity well very easily the answer that comes into our mind is that it is related to productivity but then it's very important to understand that this particular oe word is coming out from iata 16949 clause number 8.5.1.5 which is related to total productive maintenance and in that we are talking primarily with respect to the effectiveness so it is more related to the equipment performance rather than the manufacturing productivity even though it can have a impact on that and last very interesting question that is generally being discussed in industry that should we have a target only for oee only or should we also monitor availability performance and quality also so let's see one example and then we can understand that if we play with the numbers how it happens so you can see one example wherein the target which has been given by the industry or maybe by the customer is for availability is say 95% for performance we have considered 2% losses and for quality is 1000 ppm and the target which is coming out internally is 90% now in case one if the availability is 100% performance is 100% and the quality is 90.25% we will have a overall uh, achievement of 90.25% so it means we are meeting the target now take the second case wherein the availability is 100% but performance this time is less than 100% but the quality is 100% still we will get the same magical number now going to the third case wherein now in this case availability is very low performance and quality is 100% again in this case we will get the same OE but then one thing very important to understand that in all the three cases we are not meeting the intended target with respect to availability performance and quality even though we will be meeting the target of OEE so what to do next means how we can improve the OEE so first and the one basic thing that we need to do is that first of all at the time of new product development when we are selecting a new machine at that time the real action starts first of all it should be a cross functional team approach secondly the people from the maintenance process should also be a part of this particular team because they are the person who are finally being responsible for monitoring and ensuring the OE and then thirdly what's important is that whenever we are purchasing a machine we should see that what are the internal target with respect to quality cost and delivery and based on that we need to see that whichever machine that we are procuring whether it is going to meet those targets or not so for example we are assuming that our internal target for rejection is 200 ppm so whether that machine is going to give us that kind of output or not or maybe the rejection will be say to the tune of one percent or two percent and something similar is with respect to the delivery our internal target and external target to the customer is 100 percent but then we know that we cannot run the machine all 24 hours maybe we have we should have some cooling time say for example every uh, eight hours one hour so whether it is going to fulfill that expectation or not and there can be many more things with respect to that now in the last talking about the key challenges that industry is facing first and the most important challenges about the data quality <clears throat> that whenever we are calculating OE whatever data that we are putting is it actually the real the genuine data or we just manage the data the second key challenge is that okay we put the right data but then what we are doing with that data are we analyzing that data are we trying to understand that what we are doing right and what we are doing wrong and the third and the most important thing what exactly is the role of top management in this are they analyzing it are they taking some action presently on the existing machine and on the future machine what they are going to purchase or it is just a data that we are monitoring and then we are happy with that so if i do a summary i talk about what exactly is oee how to calculate oee we also discussed about one example then we talked about five different 
cases that what are the different questions that we are generally being discussed in industry, what can be done to improve the OE and what are the present industry challenges with respect to that. My next video will be with respect to competency mapping. Regularly, I'm getting a lot of feedback from your side and they are helping me to understand your expectation. So please do continue that. And in case you want to understand more about this particular video, you'll find a link below. If you click that, you'll find a blog there. And there you'll find this information in much more detail. And in case you're liking these kind of videos and blogs, you can always share with your friends and colleagues and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website, bhavyamangla.com. Thank you.